Hey everybody, this is Jen from Garden Jen's Journey. Today we're going to be talking about getting ready for winter sewing 2020. So come on along and let's have some fun. So right here you see my massive amount of jugs. I have um, all of them strung up on strings that are just run through the handles there and tied to the rafters and I've got I don't know how many strings of jugs um, but I th uh, last year I did over 350 gallon jugs like this um, and I was running short last year because my normal supplier of uh, jugs, which was a nursing home, uh, no longer could save them for me because the health department was cracking down on garbage like this. So um, they couldn't save them for me anymore. So last year um, I ended up using some of the jugs twice in that season alone. Uh, I would take some of my herbs or some of my earlier uh, crops like broccoli, cauliflower, and things like that, and take those jugs and reuse them to plant my later crops, my beans and my corn and my peanuts. So that helped a little bit. But yeah, I have probably over 200 jugs stranded up here um, for winter sowing. Some of them, as you can tell, they're from last year. They're cut and they're dirty. And then some are brand new. They're never been cut, never been opened. Um, that need to be prepared. So this year I have not done a calculation on exactly how many jugs I am doing. I know I'm not doing 350. That was too much for me last year. I'm probably going to be doing around 250 to 300 uh, max I would say because I'm still doing not only for my garden but we also sell organic seedlings at the farmers market. So um, those extra jugs are needed to facilitate that. Now in my area, Zone 5B Michigan, um, it's January and we don't have snow. We've been getting a lot of rain. Um, we're starting to get some colder temperatures. As you can see, this kiddie pool is finally frozen solid. Um, about three days ago, it still had uh, water in it. Um, that's how some of the garbage got in it. And my dogs were able to drink out of it still because it was still uh, liquid. Now it's completely frozen. This is my garden area that I'm working with and I'm going to go over here to these jugs. <clears throat> these jugs are left over from last year. Um, basically they have to be thrown out. But this area here, um, where my, this bed here, at least this was a bed last year. I'm going to be turning my bed so they're uh, north and south before um, I was trying to make my garden fancy, so I had uh, different shapes of beds and things like that. But as far as actual space, because I use square foot gardening, um, I don't have as much space as I would like. And um, some crops don't do well because of the um, direction of the beds. So I actually have to flip my beds around. So what's going long ways now is actually going to go this way because I'm facing e uh, east, west and east at the moment. But um, so anyways, but this area for now, this is where I'm gonna be putting most of my jugs this year. And then um, some overflow will go over there. Um, if you've seen videos, sorry. If you've seen videos of previous years or pictures of previous years, I had jugs here, I had jugs over there. And I had jugs over there. I had jugs everywhere because, like I said, I did about 350 jugs last year. And out of those 350 jugs, um, in case you're new to winter sowing or new to this channel, um, there are some failures that you sometimes can have. So out of 350 jugs last year, I had a failure rate of uh, about 65 jugs. And those are just some of the ones that are left that I still haven't done anything with. And i um, not sure why those 65 jugs failed. It could be um, owner's issues, my issues that I didn't do them right. It could have been seeds um, that were just junk. 
Um, it could have been our wacky weather because our weather has been on a roller coaster for the past couple of years. And so um, it's been very hard to get stable weather to grow seedlings in um, when you're doing it outdoors. But anyways, out of 350 jugs, 65 of them um, not growing anything except I got some weeds there. Um, is still a pretty good ratio um, in my opinion. <clears throat> So yeah, my jugs are all going to go over here, and there's another one. I use all sorts of jugs, <coughs> and uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm going to take you to my greenhouse. Here's my kale. It's, yeah, it's done. I have some friends in my winter sewing group that their kale looks wonderful. Yeah, mine's done. <laughs> That's my kale. It's done. So, and here's another water bowl. You can see it barely has a thin layer of ice on it. Um, but yeah, it's almost frozen solid. All right, greenhouse. So this is what I call my potting shed. My husband built it for me. It's just a made of pallets and some tarps. It's really inexpensive. Uh, looks really funky, but I don't care about the looks. It works. Um, this is where I do my my potting. Um, not winter sewing, so to speak, because it is. I think 35 degrees out here today and I'm uh, not doing winter sowing in here but um, when it comes to up potting my seedlings uh, for the farmers market um, this is what I do in here so this is all my potting supplies but it's connected to my greenhouse now this is a harbor freight greenhouse uh, 6 by 8 size I believe and let me tell you in my zone zone 5b this is junk <laughs> Um, especially in high winds. This thing is blown apart. I cannot tell you how many times, but it does not hold the temperature. Um, so for growing anything over the winter or trying to start seeds um, in uh, February, March, when usually people start seedlings indoors or in greenhouses, you can't do that with this thing. This thing does not hold heat at all. So, um, so yeah, that's one of the reasons I don't grow seedlings, um, except for the winter sowing method, is I don't have the space to be growing seedlings with a huge grow light set up. Um, I don't have a greenhouse to uh, set my seedlings up. Um, I just don't. So I use the winter sowing method and it works very well. Now I am doing some winter growing, or trying to anyways, depending on the weather. I'm trying to grow, and here I have um, lettuce and spinach planted. And nothing's germinated yet, it's still kind of too cold. But um, yeah, it's really cold in here. Um, so, yep, greenhouse does not work for me for my zone. <clears throat> Eventually, this tub is going to get moved inside. This tub is what carries my Happy Frog potting mix. And I only use Happy Frog for winter sewing. Um, it's quite expensive for some people. Um, it's like $18 a bag here in my area. I get it from a hydroponics store. Um, but for me, it's well worth the price because I get very good uh, seedlings that are nutrient dense. My customers love the seedlings. They come back to me months later and tell me how good their plants are going, how wonderful their produce tastes. And it's because I start th with uh, this high quality potting mix. So yeah, that's going to be coming inside um, in a couple months. And I'm going to be doing lots of jugs. Here's some more jugs that I have hung up um, from the winter sewing. So that's basically the update I have um, today. Um, it's nice how it's getting finally cold again, but our weather has just been crazy. Um, as far as uh, up and down, up and down. Even these poor chickens don't know what to do right now. So, yeah. So I uh, just thank you so much for watching and uh, continue with me on the journey as I uh, get ready to start getting seeds ready to go for my garden. I have a lot of a lot more uh, medicinal herbs to put in my bed here. Um, I am redoing my pollinator flower beds. That's going to be awesome. So um, I hope you guys will stick with me and we'll see how this year turns out. 2020 is already starting out to be a really crazy year. But uh, I hope it's going to be crazy good. 
So thanks for watching everybody and I hope wherever you are, you are wonderfully blessed. Bye.